Ben Harkus was a postal office messenger. He also was one of the inaugural members of the K Troop or Parramatta Troop um, of the New South Wales Lancer Regiment. In 1897, uh, he accompanied um, the detachment of the Lancers, who along with many other British colonial detachments, sent members to take part in Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee celebrations and the procession through London. As a part of those celebrations, there were a series of military tournaments which pitted the cream of the regular British Army with the very best that all the colonial contingents could put up against them. And uh, the colonial t contingents were all volunteers. They were just partially paid soldiers. They had day jobs. So you could say it was a real David and Goliath um, act. But at the end of those uh, military tournaments, uh, Queen Victoria personally um, um, awarded six gold Empire medals to the best of the very best. And the Lancers actually were awarded two of the six and Corporal Ben Harkus was one of those Lancers who was awarded um, an Imperial Gold Medal. Most of the competitions, he beat the British, but he also beat the best that any other colonial contingent could put up. In 1899, Harkus again went to England, um, this time as a part of the, um, the Lancers' half squadron of 100 partially played um, part-time soldiers who paid their own way under an officer who later became known as Fighting Charlie Cox to train full-time six months with the British Army at Aldershot. Two days before um, the, they were due to depart by, uh, by ship back to Australia, the Boer War broke out and Fighting Charlie in a fit of patriotic fervour because many Australians in those days felt that they were just Englishmen on the other side of the world, volunteered his entire half squadron to fight uh, for the British in the Boer War. Ben Harkus had uh, taken his wife and two very young children with him um, for the six months when he was in England. So suddenly he was faced with a real dilemma. Um, do I stay with my regiment? and leave my wife, who at that time happened to be very sick, um, to take the two young children um, back to Australia on her own, or um, do I walk out on my regiment to be able to take my wife and family back to Australia? When he arrived, um, the newspapers were full of um, reports of these blackguards who returned, uh, left their regiment to fight in South Africa. Um, white feathers were sent through the mail to, um, to Ben Harkus. The white feather being the, um, in those days, the cultural indicator of cowardice. Um, and uh, I believe that there were even comments made in Parliament about uh, the people who returned, including Ben Harkus, you know, as letting the regiment down, letting the state down. Whether it drove Harkus to do it, it certainly must have been an influence. He eventually um, commanded a group of 15 Lancer reinforcements um, who went to South Africa. And he actually had to fight his employer, um, the Postmaster General, to allow him to do it because the Postmaster General was insistent that he would not give approval to uh, um, members of the post office who were married to take leave of absence to go to the front and fight. And again, we have a remarkable newspaper clipping sort of where Harkus is basically saying, but if you don't allow me to do this, this is a special case. I will, be, I will not be able to live in Parramatta. Um, I will be an outcast and the Postmaster General said, well, all right, I'll transfer you to some other place. And Harkus understandably says, well, that won't help because I'll just be seen to be a rat running away from Parramatta where everybody is you know, up in arms about me. So I'm sorry, but you have to allow me to go to South Africa and fight. He eventually takes the third draft of reinforcement lances out to South Africa. But within about a week or 10 days, um, he had contracted enteric fever, which is now called typhoid, 
um, he was put into a hospital in Bloemfontein um, where he died. Um, and he is, he was and he still is buried um, in Bloemfontein in South Africa. Um, he was never returned um, to his home. Suddenly, you know, the sentiment totally changed and it was full of remorse and it, the sentiment was, we've done this guy, you know, grave injustice. He was really only looking after his family and the remorse extended to um, a composer who composed a song in tribute of Corporal Ben Harkus. All the sentiment in newspapers, etc., sort of was, oh, we've done this guy a terrible injustice. But as I say, all too late, the damage was done.